Hello guys and welcome to my new video. So today I decided to do a grid 2 tutorial along with my resto druid grid 2 settings including all of the Antors or at least Antors debuffs that I find relevant. So it should be up to date with Antors debuffs. There should be an additional emphasis on the healing debuffs that I find really important. I'll be going over my resto druid grid 2 profile. I'll be going over a lot of different things about grid 2 how to set up buffs for example dreamer buff tier 21 uh, 2 set buff how to add it to your grid of course this is going to be added in the profile but in case you want to change it i'll show you how to do that i'll show you how to add additional raid debuffs to your grid in case you actually want in case there isn't a debuff included in this profile and you want to add one i'll show you how to do that as well and then i'll go through the frequently asked questions about my grid 2 profile there there's been three questions in general that have been asked <laughs> i don't even know how many times so i'm going to include this in the video so if you do pick up the my resto uh, druid grid 2 profile please make sure to check out the uh the frequently asked questions section in the video before asking me anything because 99 percent of the time those questions are going to be answered in this video one of the questions like how do i move my grid 2 after uh, after the I import your profile. How do I change the textures? Because the textures don't look the same. Because actually the profile doesn't always export my frame textures. They don't always export my font textures. So your grid is, might look different from what you see right now. So these things are all going to be answered. So let's first start with grid. So I created a new character. Just, just to test out, make sure everything's working. In the description below, there will be my Resto Druid grid to profile for Antorus. So make sure it's going to be a paste bin link. So it's going to look something along the lines of this. You all you have to do is basically control C and control V control C and control A and control C uh, to select it all and and uh, copy it. Now before I'm actually going to cover this another really really important section about this is keeping your grid 2 updated and I know this might be very very obvious to some people there are really good clients out there for keeping your add-ons up to date. So things like the Twitch, which used to be the Curse add-on client application, uh, is amazing. For some of the people who are watching this video will be like, oh my god, I know this, why is he telling this? For other people will be like, oh, this is the best thing I've seen. Because for the new people are not aware of the fact that you can get this client and you can basically not only keep your, uh, keep your add-ons up to date, but you can also update them. Like, like, for example, my big wigs uh, add-on, uh, there's an update for it. I can just click on it and I can update it. I don't have to copy the files. I don't have to go to the WoW folders. I don't have to control, paste it over. Don't, don't have to delete any of the files. This way, it's really, really fast. The only thing that you need to make sure is that in the top right-hand section in the settings, when you go to settings, you need to make sure that your installation location for your World of Warcraft file is selected and correct. Most likely, 99% of the time, this is going to be auto-detected by the add-on, so you won't have to change it. But in case it's not... Make sure your Warcraft folder is selected by this add-on, and then you can you can see you can see update my add-ons, get more add-ons. Like I mean, it's it's really 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 good tool, and w one of the reasons why people did not get Antorus raid debuffs for their grid two is because they didn't update the add-on. So keep it up to date. That's number one. That's number one. So second, you probably have grid two add-on like this. Uh, you can see that it's pretty terrible. So let's import the profile. So you type in exclamation for slash grid 2 and you get brought into general settings now what you need to go is you go to profiles and then you go to advanced section once you're in advanced section you can see a thing called import and export profiles now click import profiles and control v the profile that you saw from pastebin and now you see it's copied there and then you click accept once you click accept you see the profile is right here this is the way my grid 2 is set up you might notice that the Textures or fonts are not looking exactly the way they are and there is a reason for that because Sometimes my fonts or textures are not Imported properly and a big reason for that is this is how you do it This is how you do it. this is you go to the indicators if you want to change the frame texture you go to indicators You don't mess around with general settings. It's really really unintuitive. You go to indicators you go to health and Then you go to layout and you make sure that grid 2 flat is selected if you want to have a different texture, like Blizzard, you see this, I don't think it looks good at all, but I have grid 2 flat. 
Now, if you want to change the font, you go to text down. Because you see here, in text down, I have offline charm and name. So you want to change the way that the name of a player is basically appears. You go to layouts and then you go to fonts. And then you can change any fonts that you want. Now, a funny thing about this, I'm using a specific font called Hodge X. It's a font that's given to me by another add-on called XCT Combat Text. So if you don't have that add-on, you won't have the font that I'm using. I, I include in the video which font I'm using and things like that. So if you do have XCT Combat Text, you can use the font that I'm actually originally using in all of my videos. So this is how you change the appearance and you make the profile look the way it should be. Now, you can see if you're new to the videos, you can see that my profile has things like indication for germination, rejuvenation, life bloom. Every time you use iron back, it's going to show up here. But you notice here right now is that where is the duration? Why am I not seeing any numbers? So this is another frequently asked question about my profile. Why are there no numbers? That's because I use a specific add-on. Let me see if I can find this. A specific add-on called Omni. CC. This add-on, what, what it basically does is adds cooldowns to everything in the game. So cooldowns for your uh, action bar spells, cooldowns to grid 2 as well. So all I want to do is enable Omni, uh, Omni CC. It's a very popular add-on, a lot of people do use it. Once I enable Omni CC, if I click Life Bloom, Rejuvenation, you can see it's 15 seconds, 15 seconds. You can see that duration is there. So that's basically my grid 2 rest of Druid profile in a nutshell and um, there's a lot of other things added to it like for example when i use tranquility it's gonna all of the bars are gonna go green oh i don't have the moving tranquility but all of the bars are gonna go green to highlight which players are affected uh, by tranquility you also have to keep in mind that i added all the necrotic bursting and all of the five man debuffs they're going to show up on the left hand corner they're going to be visible they're going you're gonna know how many stacks you don't you, you're gonna know how many the duration of the debuff and things like that which is really really important in a five-man content so let's look and taurus and taurus debuffs this is the biggest question they got so you go to forward slash grid 2 now you go to statuses you go to debuffs you extend the debuff uh, location and then you go to raid debuffs now you probably will see something like this you probably will see something like this at the very start because i've already fiddled with it you see like this and you go to debuff configuration and you like you might not, well, this is kind of booked out for a bit, but the point is, you, you'll see this, you need to make sure that you enable raid debuff module, you need to enable legion, enable legion, once you enable legion section, you go to debuff configuration, then you go to legion, and once you're in the legion section, you get to select Antorus the burning throne, once you select Antorus the burning throne, you can see every debuff in Antorus, it's actually enabled by default, you might not want it to be enabled by default. My grid 2 profile should only enable specific sections. But you can see that might not be possible. All of the debuffs might be enabled by default from the start. So you might want to remove some of those. But if you don't care, just leave it. Like, it's not it's not the end of the world. All the important debuffs, I have added them anyways. Uh, so you can, you can read through the debuffs. Like, I don't I felt of environment. I don't want to know about environment. I'm just going to disable it. And that's it. That's your, make sure that the add-on is enabled. Now, another important thing is that I do have, like, if you extend indicators, once you see the indicators, this is what I added for my profile. You see a thing called, so you can see my necrotic is added. I have bursting, grievous, and necrotic for the five mans. And so once you see this thing called no cooldown. So this indicator, no cooldown, is basically shows up here. I might have a little video to showcase it. Shows up here. And it shows important healing debuffs that I consider to be vital. So, for example, I have Antorn Sh Shock Grenade for Antorn High Command. I have Fulmination. Uh, this is... I, I also have Chilled Blood from Coven of Shivaras. It's a healing debuff that requires healers to spam the person who has it. So, I consider these to be really, really important debuffs. And they're going to be showing up, like, quite big on the kind of middle-ish, right-ish of the section. And... Um, and I've added this, and I added a lot of the debuffs for very mattress, misery, when you have to move out. I want to know this, so I added these already, and they're going to show up here. You probably won't have to fiddle with these at all. So, right now, you basically have all of them Taurus Raid debuffs. You have all the important Raid debuffs, on top of a really pretty nice uh, <laughs> grid, Resto Jewel grid too. So, this is your 
grid two setup. So how do I, it also actually includes dream, uh, dream above. So how do I actually want to, for example, how do I want to add a specific, let's say for example, I want to add chilled blood. Let's say I didn't have chilled blood. I want to have chilled blood debuff to my grid two. So the way you go, you go to debuffs, you go to statuses, you go to debuffs, and then you type it, it's debuff selected here, and then you just copy and paste chilled blood. Now you see, it doesn't actually show up here. That's why, be because grid two actually requires spell IDs. It requires numbers. So how do how the hell do I find out the spell ID of chilled blood? You can have an add-on called spell IDs, which uh, which every time you hover over a spell, it show you the spell ID. But I don't even know how to do that. So my person, it's either you find it online somewhere, or you either use tell me when. So forward slash tell me when because I use tell me when all the time. So and then you just go to a random bar that you're not using ever. You go to the icons and you select something like uh, it's a spell cooldown or whatever. And then in here you want to what to track. You want to type in chilled blood. And what this does, te what tell me when does is it basically has a database of every spell in the game and the ID of the game of this, uh, the ID of the spell. So. You want to get the ID of the chill blood. So you right click. You right click chill blood here and you get the ID. Now you just copy and paste this. You go out of your tell me when by forward slash tell me when again. And you're back to the normal. And you can see my chill blood actually shows up there. But what you want, <laughs> so I don't really want that. You can just click on it and not enable it. And you can and you can still look up the spells. Like no problem. So now what you do is you go to grid. Grid 2. You go to the debuffs. You go to the, you want to add uh, chill blood. So now you copy paste it, make sure you don't have anything else, you just need to have the number. And now you see it, it shows up. Chill blood shows up in this. And now I click on it and now create debuff. Now this debuff is somewhere here, I'm not even gonna look through it because I don't really care about it. But what you want to do, let's say for example if you're using my profile, you want to add it to the really super important spell IDs. So you go to no cooldown uh, indicator, you go to the no cooldown indicator, it can, it can be whatever. And then you can just look through the debuffs for chilled blood you see it it's right here so you just click on it and now this indicate and now this debuff is going to show up really really quite visible you're gonna know who got it you want to you want to spam heal them and that's how you add a debuff on a grid 2 and this works for anything a good combination of this is tell me when and grid 2 it works really well when you want to add a specific debuff for example again you have the same thing when you want to add let's say you want to add an indicator for your dreamer or any buff out there in the game for tier 21. Tier 21 2 set basically adds an additional hot to a person. You want to know when that's being tracked. So the way you do it, exactly the same here. Instead of debuffs, you go to buffs. And now again, if you type in dreamer, it's not going to show up. So that kind of sucks. So you have to go to tell me when again. You go to tell me when, you go here, uh, you go into unused icons. So you type in dreamer. And you can see here, this is the exact debuff that I want to know. Your Sarah's Gift now applies treatment to the target, healing them for 4,000 over 8 seconds. Right click this. Copy and paste the spell ID. Turn off tell me when because I don't want to know. Go back to grid 2. Go back to the uh, to buffs. And this time you do the same thing. You just add the spell ID and you see Dreamer shows up. You click on it and you click create buff. For me it doesn't show because I already have it. It's already shown up on my profile. So you have a so you have a dreamer buff. So let's say you want to sh show this uh, debuff or this buff somewhere, somewhere else. You want to add it somewhere else. So the way you go with the way you do, it, you go to indicators and then you see the name. So type in you want to type in anything dreamer buff. It does not matter. Type in the name of the indicator. So it's going to be called dreamer buff. It's going to be not a square. Add it as an icon. Icon is usually ten times better than anything else. Add it an icon, and and then you select location. So I want to. Show this up at the very, very top. I want to show this up here. I want to show this right here. So now you have this added. Create indicator. So now you can see that Dreamer buff is added here. If you want to test it out, you can click test. And then you see all of the debuffs. Or you can see all of the indicators that I use. Now a good way to do this is to actually click test. Go to Dreamer buff. And let's say we want to track something easy. Something like... Um, you, you will click Dreamer to track, but in order to for this video to show up, I'm just gonna track Life Bloom because I want you to see how it's going to look like. So I'm gonna add Life Bloom for for this time being. So you go to Dreamer, you add your Dreamer, you add a Life Bloom, you go to layouts. This is the important part. 
So you want to make the size 18. Why do you want to make the size 18? Because if the size is below 18, Omni CC is not going to show the cooldown. It's not going to show the duration of the buff. It's just going to go, it's going to show a little black shadow going around. But you want to know the exact seconds of how long it's going to last. So make sure the size is 18. And now you just go X offset and Y offset. So for example, I want to go to the very top. You see what I'm doing here? You can kind of see, you can kind of see the buff going up and, up and down. You see it? This is the way to, sh uh, to kind of visually see where the buff is going to go. So I want to, let's say for example, I want to go on the very top. So this is the icon here. I like the position. It look, it's looking good, blah, blah, blah. You want to go back to indicate. So this is it. You want to go back to indicators and click test. And now every time I'm going to use light bloom, it's going to show up at the top. So every time, this is how you add an indicator. So this is a bit more advanced. You don't have to do this because my Grid 2 Resto, Resto Grid 2 profile already has it. But in case you want to mess around with it, it's good to know this information because it's really, really interesting. Once you know a bit more about Grid 2, you can do fantastic things with it. So another thing that I get a lot, a lot from people about uh, who got my profile, how, how do I move the frames? So... This is a little bit interesting. It's kind of not intuitive at all. So the way you do it is you go to grid 2 again. You go to layouts. You go to layouts. And then you see the solo layout, party layout, raid layout, arena layout. So you want to say you want to move your grid 2 when you're in a raid. So you click test. Once you click test, you also have to make sure that it, there's no frame lock. Once you click test, you can move it. So I'm going to move it here. I'm going to go back to layouts and I'm going to unclick test. There you go. Let's say I want to change it for solo content for the five man. So I want to change. I click test again and I move it somewhere here and then I click test again. There you go. This is how you move grid 2. Now another tip. If you are doing Antoran high command, you might notice the fact that you cannot heal the pod person. And this is, there's a lot, there's a lot of health used to have this problem with. The way to actually fix healing people in Antoran high command Using grid 2 is to actually change your raid uh, grouping. Instead of by group, you want to click on by group with pets. Once you click by group with pets, you will be able to see like hunter pets in your grid, but you also be able to heal the people in pods. And that's it. That basically is how it works. Um, and this has been, hopefully not too long, a tutorial video about how to add debuffs, remove debuffs, my grid, rest of your grid 2 uh, profile. Uh, how I uh, let me know let me know how you feel about the different icons let me know if you want any, anything to be changed like I say for example you see the little wild grow things as well and um, there's also the spellable bar that I've added you'll your icon or your frame will highlight in like purple if it's a curse I only added the spellable magic curse and all that only what's available for druids to dispel so you won't be able to see uh, abilities or debuffs that you can't dispel but either way this profile should give you on Taurus raid debuffs, should give you resto druid spell indicators, it should help you how to add debuffs, how to add buffs, how to add indicators, uh, how to move the frame, how to change the textures and things like that. So everything should be here. Let me know if you have any other issues. Let me know if I left out something. Let me know how you feel, how you feel about this profile. And thank you for watching this tutorial and I'll see you next time.